Hey everyone, I'm Lynette Cole. I'm a licensed esthetician and the Global Education Director for Pure. And today I'm just gonna answer some of the questions you've had about um, skin, skin care, ingredients, and makeup. So if you're interested in any of those topics, stick around. Uh, we're gonna start off by easing into this with a skincare question. So the question is, when it comes to SPF, should I consider using a high number of SPF in a product for my skin? Uh, you definitely want to um, consider the number of the SPF, of course. So, but this is a twofold um, type of answer. So the number that's attached to the SPF, like if I were to take this tinted moisturizer. This tinted moisturizer has a broad spectrum of SPF 20. The SPF 20, the number associated with this, is actually protecting your skin from UVB. So UVB is the burning rays, or you're protecting your skin from the rays that causes cancer. Um, but most of us, in as beauty enthusiasts, <laughs> we also wanna protect our skin from the aging rays, the UVA rays. And so for that, you really want to look at the ingredients ingredient deck. So definitely look at the number associated with SPF, but know that that number is really about protecting your skin from the burning rays. And then on the back, you want to look for ingredients like titanium dioxide or zinc oxide and at least a 5% um, to protect your skin from the aging process, that photo aging of the skin. So for example, um, the 4-in-1 Tinted Moisturizer has at least a 5% titanium dioxide and zinc oxide. If you look at the 4-in-1 Press Mineral Powder with SPF 15, that SPF 15 is about protecting the skin from the burning rays. But you want to look on the back for the ingredients where it says titanium dioxide at 17%. So I hope that answers your question when it comes to SPF, um, but I also want to share Share that um, if you haven't already we also have another stressor on the skin that's aging our skin and that's our high energy visible blue light that is cast from like our computers um, our cell phones like I'm using today to, to film this video um, this is also breaking down collagen in the skin so now that we have been really educated on um, the damage caused by the sun and being outdoors without SPF. Now that we've come indoors, we also need to make sure that we're protecting our skin from high energy visible blue light. And um, those ingredients you really wanna make sure are in products that you're using daily because we're on our devices daily. So one of the things that I do is um, I actually and this is very simple because I think we're all setting our makeup at the end of um, our makeup routine. So in my setting spray, like Lip Mist, it has our, and you'll see this little light bulb right here, this little light bulb icon. This is um, making sure that you know that there is blue light defense in this setting spray. So this is actually protecting your skin from high energy visible blue light. It doesn't matter you know, what brand of cosmetics you're using. It doesn't matter you know, what product you're using. Um, if you're using setting sprays, this is a great way in order to, again, protect your skin from damage caused by high energy visible blue light. So the next question is about moisturizers. Can a moisturizer dehydrate my skin? This is actually a fact. Uh, because dehydration is a skin condition and it requires a different type of quote-unquote uh, product to put onto the skin. So the thing about um, the beauty industry is that they're lumping you know hydrators, hybrids, moisturizers, all of this into one category when in fact each one should have their own category um, so that way it makes it a lot easier for us to find you know, the product that's best for our skin. So dehydration is a skin condition. And this is something that um, is when the skin is lacking water. So you wanna look for more hydrators that are going to help the skin retain water um, and, and therefore have the benefits of the plumping and then the skin looks smoother. It just looks so much better. So I have dry skin. I've um, 
as I'm getting older, my skin is just, has changed from kind of like a oily skin to a dry skin, and then I'll have dehydrated skin um, when things change in my schedule. So if I'm flying a lot, if I'm um, traveling, sometimes if I'm staying in hotels, the water is actually different. So everything affects your skin. So in those cases of dehydration is when you wanna use a hydrator. So for example, Soak It Up for Pure is a hydrator for us. It's not technically a moisturizer. Um, this is this sole purpose of Soak It Up is for retaining water. It is pulling, um, you know, using humectants in order to hydrate or to um, retain water for the skin. So it gives you that instant gratification. Um, this is also has the sodium hyaluronate in it, so we all know um, the beautiful benefits of sodium hyaluronate. But that sole purpose is to really retain water to the skin. This can be used in a layering process with your um, other moisturizers for anti-aging or emollients and things like that. So it's a very lightweight texture typically, but its sole job is just to help your skin retain the water. You may not need it every single day, depending on the climate you're in or the season that you're in, but it's nice to have when you do. Then you've got, let's say, um, in the moisturizer category, you also have the hybrids. Now the hybrids are ones that are going to do multiple jobs. So they're going to kind of take the best of both worlds and bring it together. So I like to sometimes also use a hybrid because they're usually loaded with a little bit more of your anti-aging ingredients, but its sole purpose as well is to kind of um, bridge the gap between the, the hydrators and your anti-aging ingredients as well. <clears throat> so the 4-in-1 Clown Cream for Pure is our hybrid. This is more of like an essence, if you will. It's very lightweight. Um, it is going to help your skin if you have dehydrated skin. And it also has your anti-aging ingredients in here. So this is going to lock in your moisture. It is going to help your skin retain water. Um, this also has your blue light defense in here, as well as we talked about um, when we were talking about SPF and protecting the skin. So you've got that benefit going on within the 4-in-1 Cloud Cream. Um, the texture is really, really light, which I appreciate because I don't like heavy creams on my skin. I like my skin to feel lightweight um, and any product that I use to feel lightweight as well. This is gonna have um, more of your anti-aging ingredients. So for Pure, this has got you know purified retinol, lactic acid, moisturizing ceramides. So it's addressing signs of aging on the skin. It's protecting the skin and then it also is giving your skin that hydration level that it needs. Now, don't discount your um, nighttime creams because your moisturizers or your nighttime creams, what that is meant to do is actually protect the skin's barrier. So this is kind of like your seal, if you will, on top of the skin. So this is going to help your skin um, lock in all the goodness you've put on. So if you're using like a serum, if you're using a hydrator, um, this is going to help really lock in everything for the skin. These are gonna be a little bit more emollient. So a lot of people like myself, I use this at nighttime to really lock in everything before I go to bed. And then that way your skin just looks like phenomenal in the morning. You've got glowing skin, it's radiant, it feels nice, and you're ready to like, you know, wash your wash your face and then, you know, put on your makeup and things like that. So it just really is kind of like the big sister of all the moisturizers, if you will. So I hope that answers your question when it comes to moisturizers. You certainly can layer them. Um, you would want to go with your hydrator first, your hybrid, and then of course your emollient as well. Okay, so let's talk about cleansing the skin. This question, is quite interesting, which I'm sure we've all come into this. Is washing your face bad for your skin? Um, anyone who's not washing their face is doing a disservice to their skin, actually. And I'm not just saying that as a licensed esthetician. I'm just saying that 
by not washing your face, you're actually leaving oil, dirt, debris, pollution, and bacteria on your skin, which um, can be very damaging and harmful at a cellular level. Um, and, and I get what you're saying about, you know, thinking that washing your face is what is causing some of the the um, concerns in your skin you know and I get that you're justifying it just fine <laughs> but at the same time a lot of that dehydration the breakouts the irritation the dryness of the skin or the excess um, oil on the skin, the buildup of oil, can be for the fact that you're not cleansing your skin in the right way. Um, your skin will tell you. It communicates with you every single day, whether it likes something or doesn't like something. It doesn't mean just abandon the practice. It means maybe let's kind of search out some things or, di or different products and begin using those. So I'm of the practice that um, washing your face at least twice a day, I'm a twice a day washer minimum, um, but at least once a day, that by removing that dirt, the excess oil, um, the pollution, the bacteria that does settle onto the skin, um, because just think your skin is out there. It's, it is coming in contact with environmental stressors. Um, when you're outdoors, I mean, I can just feel sometimes the dirt on my skin. And so you really need to just have a basic routine and it doesn't have to be 10, 12 steps. I mean, it can literally just be as simple as using a great everyday cleanser, a toner just to make sure all is well, that you've removed all of that, the dirt, the oil, and the debris or makeup off the skin, and then just a nice anti-aging moisturizer. And right there, you're doing so much for your skin. Um, if you can add in that SPF, that's fantastic for the day, but um, a moisturizer at night is just so fantastic, fantastic because that's when the skin really nourishes, protects, restores, and repairs itself. And let's face it, we're gonna have this face for as long as we live, so we better take care of it. <laughs> okay, so the next question is vitamin C. Vitamin C, is it an important step in my daily skincare routine? Well, the short answer is yes. It is um, an important step to your daily routine. In fact, this is one ingredient that I wish I had um, really, really gotten behind in my 20s because now, 20 years later, I'm, you know, I could see that I could have prevented a lot of things that have been happening to my skin. So what vitamin C does is that vitamin C neutralizes the oxidative stress that happens to our skin. It also helps combat um, the free radicals and so, or free radical damage to the skin that actually breaks down collagen in the skin. So now, 20 years later, yes, that's where I'm like, ooh, you know, my skin could be firmer. It could be lifted, you know, more so if I had started vitamin C in my 20s. Um, vitamin C also helps with um, addressing fine lines and wrinkles, whether it's like at the crow's feet around the eye area. Um, in the skin itself, like through the nasal labial folds. Um, so it is the forehead. I mean, this is like areas where we're all concerned about getting lines and wrinkles. Um, vitamin C is one of your best friends for that. It also helps brighten your skin. So if you ever feel like your skin is dull, it looks tired, it looks stressed, vitamin C is one of those um, ingredients that really helps the appearance of the skin. Um, if you have hyperpigmentation or dark spots on the skin, this is you know another ingredient that really helps address um, those concerns as well. So there are, there are a couple of forms of vitamin C. Um, when you look on an ingredient deck, like if you're looking at a serum or a moisturizer and you're looking for vitamin C, you might recognize the name L-ascorbic acid or um, ascorbic acid. And um, that is something that is an ingredient name that you can see and know immediately that it's vitamin C, but there are vitamin C esters as well. So a vitamin C ester 
it is like an added molecule and um, what happens there is that it's an extra step or an extra process that your skin has to go through in order to recognize um, that it's vitamin C or L-ascorbic acid. So once it recognizes it in the molecule form, it then breaks it down or reverts it to the L-ascorbic. So your skin already will recognize it, it breaks it down, and then it, uh, you get the benefits of vitamin C. So for example, myself, um, I use vitamin C in a powder form and I like the powder form. I use it in the Shake and Boost and I use an ester of the vitamin C. So this is the sodium ascorbyl phosphate and the sodium ascorbyl phosphate in the ester form is then that molecule that the skin is going to recognize. Then it's gonna break it down and go, oh, it's L-ascorbic acid. And then it recognizes what it's meant to do for the skin. And I like it in the powder form because because usually in the powder form, it can be one, its own concentrate, or it can be coupled with a couple of other uh, skin benefiting ingredients. Like for example, Shake and Boost is, has your niacinamide in here. It also has your purified retinol, lactic acid as well. So you, you get more bang for your buck, I guess you could say, when it comes to using it in an ester um, and then in the powder form. The powder form is gonna be a little bit more concentrated. It also is more stable because with vitamin C, once it's, um, once it comes in contact like with water and things like that, it changes the efficacy of the product. So this I like to use because this I can add into a moisturizer, I can add it into my serum, or if I forget one day, I can actually add it into my primer as well. So you can custom blend, I guess, your vitamin C um, into any product that you want when it's in a powder form. So I really like that. So I hope that answers your question when it comes to vitamin C. Overall, I think we can all agree that we want to spend our time and money on products that are going to do something for the skin, benefit our skin in some way. We want to see a result from the money that we've spent and the time that we spent on our skin. So no matter where you are in your skincare journey, I do hope that you will start to incorporate some of the ingredients that we talked about today. You want to incorporate the antioxidants, um, sunscreen, both UVA and UVB. You also want to incorporate some peptides, ceramides, your vitamin A or retinol, because these are things that are going to help address signs of aging on the skin. And every little bit does help along our journey. It doesn't matter if you're in your 20s, your 30s, your 40s, your 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s. It doesn't matter where you are in your skin journey. All of this is going to help benefit your skin. And again, if you can, get in to see your skin specialist, your esthetician, to get a facial every 30 to 60 days because this is going to help accelerate your overall skin wellness. It's also gonna help accelerate the radiance and glowing skin. So these are things that I think that are very important for the skin and um, I'm just happy to be on your skin journey. So until next time, I'm Lynette and I look forward to answering all of your questions.